What's up guys, welcome to the Comic Den. Uh, I'm trying something new today, so I'm doing a live stream, but I'm also recording some stuff for uh, the Comic Rundown. I had recorded this whole thing for the spread earlier, um, but I just, I wasn't happy with it. It sounded dull, and I, I, I don't know. I've been working on how to make these videos more interesting. I've also been trying to work on how to make them sound more natural, and if you've noticed, I say um a lot, which I've also been trying to work on, but it, it's it's difficult. So I'm, I'm just toying around with a couple things, so let me know what you think uh, in the comments. Um, also, like I said, this will be on YouTube at The Comic Den, so go to YouTube, check it out. Even if you watch this, you can watch the whole thing, or at least listen. So here I'm going to have a video, but otherwise it'll be good. All right, so... Uh, this is the spread. It's by Kyle Strom uh, and Justin Jordan. Uh, I've never met Justin Jordan, but I have met Kyle. He's a pretty cool guy. Sat there and talked to me for a while about this. I also like that uh, since he's in Kansas City, he gets a lot of like local artists to check this stuff out and to um, do a lot of the art for it. Uh, I've talked to a few artists who have worked on it, and they said it's just absolutely one of the most fun things because... Essentially, you just think of the grossest thing that you could think of drawing, and you just get to go nuts with it. Uh, there is a certain style to it, but other than that, you just go for as gross as you can get. And they kind of go big with the front cover. You know, they have the baby and, like, the carrier. There's a little octopus, but there's tentacles with blood everywhere. And uh, it's just brutal all the way through the comic. And this is probably one of the most toned down <laughs> images in the whole thing. So, uh, we go in, and one of the best things about this whole series is, in my mind, I, I like comics that are driven by the art, um, not so much by the words. Now, sometimes you need uh, a narrator, which is what they utilize more in this. So sometimes you want a narrator, sometimes you want some exposition. Uh, you just don't want exposition for the sake of exposition. Um, currently, I'm reading through, uh, I'm reading through Cl Chris Claremont's run of the Uncanny X-Men from the very beginning, from his very first issue. I'm gonna try to read all the way through his run, which is some, you know, 20, 30 years worth of <laughs> comics. It seems like. Uh, but it, one thing I've noticed is they are heavy on exposition. It's just talking and talking and talking. And not just them talking to one another, but even the thought bubbles of, I'm holding on to this ladder. It's going to fall. If I fall, I'm going to fall this far. And if I hit the ground, it's going to hurt this much. And it's just super clunky, uh, especially whenever you're, you're trying to read through and you want to enjoy the art. And the art should speak for itself. And that's especially in Claremont's run, the art would speak for itself, but I think at that time they felt the need to kind of speak and have more exposition. But uh, you, these guys did an excellent job of just cutting out any non-essential speech and just letting the story run. I was telling a friend about this earlier, and uh, I was telling him how you could wipe all the words out of this story and it would still be just as good. You could you'd understand what was going on, you would get the gist of the storyline, you would know that this spread is killing people, it's turning people, it's making some people into the spread, some people not. I think about the only thing that would leave you wondering, and I guess you'd kind of get it, is that some people are immune while others aren't. Uh, you would definitely get um, the importance of hope which we'll be introduced to here in a second. Uh, but, you know, here's our character, No, and I like how they kind of start off making him a sympathetic character. I mean, obviously you're not going to live in this part of the world with all of this going on and be some sort of soft person. So he's got to be hard in the sense of he's still alive. Um, but the first time you see him, he's closing this guy's eyes after he was killed brutally. Um... But, you know, it immediately switches gears uh, to how awesome he is. And this is probably one of my favorite panels of the whole thing. And it just kind of 
emphasizes how gross and disgusting uh, this actually is to zoom in on the eye and then it just turns into a mouth uh, it, it's god I just love it it's the thing of nightmares truly uh, so this guy's attacking no and no just brutally brutally kills him um, which it, it you I don't know it's one of those things where if you're gonna survive in this area you have to be good at killing um, I like to think and compare it to The Walking Dead you know anybody who's alive isn't alive because they hid really well they're alive because they can hide really well but also because they can defend themselves because it's not just these mindless monsters that are attacking it's other people it's animals it's all kinds of stuff and as you see through here there are some people who are essentially cannon fodder um, but even them if a normal person were to interact with them they would probably get killed and you know we do see that here uh, in a couple of panels that the weak just do not survive and it, it's amazing uh, how all of this gets conveyed through here um, this is where we get introduced to hope uh, and we'll find out why hope so important later but there was this big plane crash and we have this woman just kind of staggering off and she's got this bundle with a baby in it and uh, these people just take her um, and the whole the whole storyline of spread is about hope and uh, her journey now we know that the narrator is hope so spoiler alert she doesn't die in any of these uh, but that isn't it, it that's another thing is usually whenever there's a narrator and they say oh that's me uh, you kind of know all right well nothing bad's gonna happen to her but that doesn't diminish the story and I just finished uh, volume 5 which I guess is the end of it um, I don't think they're making any more they're moving on to other things uh, but it is just an awesome ending even though we know hope's gonna live we don't know how everything else is gonna go down uh, but yeah so the whole thing is uh, he finds that lady she says you need to go find hope and that's what he does uh, now throughout this there's all kinds of mayhem and stuff like that ensuing and for those of you who are just listening uh, I'll try to throw up some pictures on YouTube so that you can kind of see what's going on uh, I highly encourage anybody who hasn't read spread or heard of spread go on Amazon find it and order it right now it, it is one of the greatest stories ever and like I said it's mostly visual um, but here we have uh, no he's kind of resigned to his fate the tentacles have gotten him and then he's holding out this baby and she cries and this one single tear drops onto a tentacle before it can kill them and it just burns it like acid the whole thing just starts decaying and turning into this black oozing pussy tentacle uh, so even whenever the spread dies it dies brutally uh, and so it, it's just that's how the whole thing ends we we get a picture of this priest we get no holding the baby and we have this new understanding of how the world works so in one single issue in the first issue we find out that there's this massive gross nasty thing we find out that some people are infected by it we find out that some are not we also find out that there is now a human who can kill it uh, with its DNA and so it's just a lot to pack into one issue which is why I, I like I said I encourage you go buy the whole volume if I had to buy this issue by issue I there's no way I would have survived I would have gone crazy so we jump into chapter two and we see this guy who's very pretty and he's got lots of pretty women taking care of him brushing his hair uh, but we also find out that he's in this quarantined area and we find out that his name's Ravello. I think that's how you say his name. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, I'm just going to call him Ravello because that's how I've been pronouncing it. Uh, and we find out that he's the leader of one of these marauding gangs. And this is kind of the introduction of the idea 
of people going into the spread voluntarily, um, people going into this quarantined area, or when they had the opportunity to leave, not leaving the quarantined area. Uh, and, you know, there are people in here um, that would take full advantage of that. Just like in the real world, if there was some sort of giant natural disaster, there would be people who would thrive in that situation. There would be people who would take that opportunity to rise above where they were before, to use their talents, use their skills, or just to completely redevelop their skills. Uh, I know we see it in like The Walking Dead too, um, that the governor was, I think he like said he sold copy machines or he did something that was very mundane, uh, but then all of the zombies started coming up and he rose to a position of power and he took charge and he was then leading a giant group of people. So we would see that and that's how life would really work. Even though society collapses around us, some people who depended on that society would also fall, but everybody else uh, would find a way to survive. And the people who did survive, survived for a reason. They're either tough mentally or physically or both. And so that's what we see here with Ravello. He's super adept at fighting and moving and super fast uh, and later on we'll find out that his claim to fame was that he's never been cut or hit um, but this brings up another thing that we would also see is a thriving slave trade and so um, that's another thing that they they hit on pretty hard is that um, just because people are entrepreneurs does not necessarily mean that they're gonna be uh, the most devout of Christians. Um, people are gonna s trade in people, people are gonna buy and sell people, people are gonna try to get drugs and all kinds of vice, and they're gonna treat this like the Wild West. I mean, that's essentially what it is. There are no rules other than the rules that the strongest people make. And if the strongest people say that it's okay to sell people, then they do that. And we'll kind of see that once we get further into this. But um, this is bringing another character into the story called Molly. And Molly is, for all intents and purposes, crazy. Um, she, she repeats herself. She rambles. She has crazy hair that's going everywhere. Um, but she is lactating. She's producing milk, so uh, obviously Hope, the baby, needs milk, and so No tries to save her. No tries to break her free, and we get this awesome image of this giant spread worm, is what they call it, and it's got these giant mouths all over its body, uh, and Hope is kind of, or not Hope, uh, No is excited because he gets to test out this new toy, so he takes his hatchet, and he gets some of Hope's spit or spit up or slobber or drool or whatever it is and puts it on his axe and then goes out and starts chomping on chopping on this worm. Uh, and it's, it's great because the worm actually eats him and all of a sudden you see his fist with an axe just bust out of there and he stands up and it's this big heroic pose and then he just vomits all over the place. So, I mean, just any any opportunity these guys to take could take to add a little disgusting into it, uh, but yeah. So we're we're slowly growing this world. We're slowly growing this family. Originally, Noah's by himself, and by chapter three, he's already got Hope and Molly. So he's starting to get this little clan together. Uh, and in chapter three, we see that he's walking into this makeshift shanty town and it's got all these giant walls to help keep the spread out um, and he has to check in his weapons whenever he goes in uh, he's not too excited about that but the first few pages we see of this town we have people who are trading we have prostitutes we have drug dealers we have food markets we have uh, that crazy priest uh, who was at the beginning we have him there and he's preaching to all these people um, and they've kind of already set this up to where he's going to be a big important piece. Um, but you would also have that. That's it, it's amazing how whenever you're dealing with things that are like alternate reality, 
Uh, obviously, you can take it in whatever way you want, but it's also important to have it grounded as, you know, you would have that. You would have, just like you'd have people rise up and become warlords and people who would rise up and become governors and people who'd rise up and do great things, you'd also have people who would become some sort of priest, some sort of uh, religious leader throughout this whole thing. And that's what that guy did. And we'll learn later that there's more to it than that. But um, it is just drawing on these people taking on the roles that you would actually see in some sort of post-apocalyptic situation. Uh, so this is where you meet Jack. And as you can see, Jack is a huge dude. He's breaking up this fight. Um, and Jack runs this little town. Jack runs this shanty town. And we'll see what happens and how he keeps order. So you can see uh, right there, he's dragging this guy off. Um, and so we cut to No and everybody going in, taking showers, getting cleaned up. And there's this scene where Molly uh, has all these brushes and combs and picks and stuff just stuck in her hair. Uh, and we'll find out what happens to that later. But there's also just this other guy and we see this woman walking in and she ends up getting in the bathtub with him but it cuts away and at this point we don't really know why she's there or who this guy even is um but we also see that uh no is getting ready to eat some chili or stew um but they've also noticed that uh there's no animals around there's no livestock there's nothing to get meat there's no way to uh you know harvest any food you don't go out and hunt too often because one the spread has gotten a lot of deer and two it's too dangerous to go out there because the spreads out there getting deer and so you kind of want to avoid outside um so that prompts no to go and kind of peek around and what he finds is that Jack has been taking people who are causing problems and chopping them up and throwing them in the stew. There's this great picture of uh, the guy who was just in a fight that was just broken up. He's uh, hanging by his hands from a hook. And then there's people behind him in various states of being chopped up. Uh, and so, again, that that's one of those things where... It's disgusting and it's wrong, but it's also the only way that Jack can see, you know, how do you keep an entire village of essentially crazy people. I mean, these are people who have chosen to stay in the quarantine zone. These are people who may have chosen to come to the quarantine zone. And so they're not necessarily the greatest group of people and so if they start acting up you can't have a lawless town you can't have a lawless village and other than hiring a police force which costs money and then you have to make sure they don't become corrupt so what jack's decided is anybody who causes problems gets taken care of so i can kill two birds with one stone i can keep order in my village and i can feed people and make money at the same time uh so yeah no tries to fight him doesn't do too well uh, ends up getting put up on a chain himself. But then we cut back to that woman who was climbing in the bathtub. And this guy's pretty excited about it. And whenever he goes to grab her and grope her, this giant split opens up down the middle of her chest. And we find out that she's actually spread infected. Uh, which is going to pop off here in a second. And so that's just kind of setting up for a future thing right there. But we go back to No and... Um, then we find out that to make matters worse, we have, uh, Ravello showing up with his people. So we get to chapter four and we find out that, um, Molly actually used to belong to Ravello and, uh, you can just kind of glean what she was used for. Um, but that flashback was just a real quick thing. And that's another thing is... Uh, they don't necessarily tell you what's going on. They don't show you what happened, but we're all smart enough to figure it out. So why waste panels on that when you can use panels for other things? Why waste an image on that when you can say, okay, this is clearly Molly. We can insinuate what's happening, and then we can just keep going from there. Um, 
but it turns out Ravello and Jack had some sort of understanding, and Ravello wants to get No, because No killed a bunch of his people, and he wants revenge, but he also knows that No killed those people for a reason, and he wants to know why that baby is so important. Um, Molly, on the other hand, is freaking out because obviously she knows who Ravello was and who his people were, and so she goes and just bites the... <laughs> She bites the jugular and pulls this giant, bloody, gushy tendon out of this dude's neck. Uh, and it's just, oh, man. It, the the gore in this is just, it's amazing, and I love it. I love whenever you just go over the top. Because you can go over the top and it'd be bad, or you can go over the top and it'd be awesome. And this is definitely an over-the-top and awesome. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, like, Kill Bill, whenever they were killing each other. Uh, and just blood spraying all over the place. It's over the top, but it's good. It's awesome over the top. Um, so they're looking for No, and No is, again, just showing how awesome he is. He got loose, he got some knives, and uh, now he's just killing dudes again. And the fight scene between No and Ravello is pretty awesome because Ravello's never met anybody who's as good a fighter. Um, however, Ravello is better and he's got him pinned he's about to shoot him uh but then that's when we find out that uh the spread's coming and so um that guy that molly killed bit his throat out ends up biting somebody else and turning into this crazy spider thing uh but once they get outside and ravello's about to execute no uh that's when kind of everything goes crazy the priest shows up and he starts spouting off all his nonsense about how the spread is God and God is good and God is coming and we should all embrace the spread. And then you see that a few of his followers uh, essentially explode into spread. And if, again, if like, the, the images that come along with this, and again, on YouTube, for those of you who are listening, uh, I'll try to post some pictures. Um, but it is it is beautifully done how these guys are just exploding with spread and it, my words do not do it justice in the least uh but so we cut to chapter five and it's just more fighting at this point so not only are Ravello and no fighting but then you have the spread getting involved you have jack getting involved you have everybody who's just fighting and then trying to survive. Uh, there's no real cohesion. It's just one big crazy mess. Uh, and No kind of takes advantage of it. No seems to thrive in these situations. Uh, it's in these types of situations that you see him with a smirk. You see him with uh, a smile. You see him act a little bit cocky and have a little bit of swagger back. Uh, he doesn't really sweat it whenever things start going crazy. Um, but we also see that Molly is holding her own. Um, Molly is getting the baby and she's making sure that Hope is safe and then Hope starts crying and so she uh, takes the tears and starts killing all of these monsters that are trying to get her, all the spread monsters that are trying to get her. Uh, and then she comes out from under this trailer that she was hidden under and she's surrounded and the priest shows up. Uh, but, lucky for her, <laughs> Hope had to throw up, so she's sprinkler, like a sprinkler, she's projectile vomiting all over these monsters and it's killing them. <laughs> I just, it's just so stupid. It's so silly a thought of using a baby as a weapon, especially the vomit. But it's so well done, and I love it. <laughs> so we cut back to uh, Ravello and No, and uh, No figures out he's like, listen, I gotta get out of here. Ravello's after me, uh, and he's gonna chase me whether I'm here or whether I'm somewhere else. So let's at least get this one piece taken care of because it's just chaos and nothing good's gonna come from it. Um, so he takes off, uh, Ravello follows him, 
Um, but then we also see uh, Jack and Molly, and it's kind of pairing people up. So we have Ravello and No, boom, and then they're taking off. Then we have uh, Jack and Molly, and they're not necessarily teaming up, uh, but they're there together. And so what we find out is it cuts to the fight, and again, this is just a big fight scene, and No is really good, but so is Ravello, and Ravello is super fast. But what we also find out is that No turns out to be a good tactician. So he takes him out to the middle of nowhere, uh, and then almost, I would assume, that he lets himself get the crap kicked out of him. Uh, and right before he gets executed, you look up, and there's three giant spread worms. And so I'm almost thinking that you know that was the whole plan. So we're in chapter six now. Uh, then you have No and Ravello and the spread worms, and No is avoiding them. And after uh, a little bit of that, we cut to we cut back to the village, and it's Molly, and then a flashback, and then Molly, and then the priest, and then a flashback. And so it's interesting that they're just kind of throwing these little bits and pieces at you. Uh, the priest gets uh, Molly subdued. The priest gets the baby, and the ba he's about to kill the baby because the spread knows that the baby's dangerous. But this is where we also see uh, Jack come in. And Jack comes in, and he's just killing everybody. Uh, and so whenever he gets in there, he cuts the priest's hand off, and um, Molly then takes charge uh, whenever everything's kind of in chaos. Uh, and so you see that Jack's maybe not the worst guy. Um, I, I love him. I think he's probably one of my favorite characters of this whole story. Uh, just because he seems like a big, tough, mean guy who's going to do his own thing. And even though he is pretty sadistic, even though he is uh, pretty crazy, uh, he does have a heart and he does care and he does want to form relationships and he does want to do good but he's just going to do good the way he does good uh so we go back to no and Ravello, and it's just cutting back and forth until finally the worms crash back into the village and when the worms crash back into the village that's when everybody's like okay it's not worth fighting anymore now we just need to run um but in all this chaos we see that uh no gets stabbed and um, we also see that the priest is still alive and the priest is getting ready to stab Molly, but Molly turns around and stabs him through the head. And again, just the, <laughs> the way that he gets murdered is amazing. Uh, still got this giant nasty grin on his face, stabbed from under the chin and through the skull. Uh, it's, it's just beautifully done. Um, but we also see that No is not quite done. And so uh, No throws Ravello into the worm's mouth. And sorry about that, my wife's walking around upstairs. Uh, and then No is just carried off by Jack and Molly. Um, and then at the end we see this egg thing that's spit out uh, and we see this hand popping out. So we know that Ravello is immune so this is going to be something new so this is kind of leading us into it and after i've read the fifth one i go back and i look at this and i'm like oh crap so this this is when it happened because the time that i read this story to the time that i read the fifth one uh was a long time um and so it's nice to kind of go back and reread this and figure out what's going on um but yeah that's spread that's uh the entire first volume um, if you guys like this I can do the rest of them uh, I, I might toy around with a couple more formats if you like the live stream and then if we'll see how the recording goes I probably won't do too much editing just because uh, I think I've got a little bit of a better version going right now but let me know what you think in the comments uh, make sure to follow me on uh, YouTube Go on, hit the subscribe button, uh, then hit the little bell so that you can get notified whenever I post new content. Also, the more likes I get, the more interaction I get, the more shares I get, 
uh, the more people are able to see it. That's how the algorithm works. Same with uh, Facebook and Instagram. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, spread it around. Tell your friends. Tell everybody what's going on. But we got to go, guys. Later.